dreams. We all have them. But for some people, they're actually quite unattainable. And they're not because they're dreaming of jumping over buildings or swimming across oceans or flying like birds. They're actually as simple as just attending college. But really, their dreams are unattainable because of a broken immigration system. I'm talking about our US dreamers. So named after the proposed Development Relief and Education for Alien Minors Act, dreamers are young immigrants who live in this country undocumented after having been brought here by their parents. I was a dreamer. But really, I was a dreamer in a time where really dehumanizing words were used to describe me. So just for reference, the DREAM Act was actually proposed in 2001. It was the exact same year that I graduated high school. But let me go ahead and back up and tell you a little bit about my story. So I was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Yep. Where's my Mexican people at? Okay, good. Uh, and we moved to Southern California when I was eight years old. So where's my Cali people at? Y'all come out strong. Y'all come out strong. But as the Cali people know, the high cost of living in California, well, let's just say it meant that we spent our Friday evenings actually climbing into donation bins at the local thrift store to find goods that then we would sell at yard sales. This was absolutely not the dream that my parents envisioned. And so we actually returned to Mexico. And the return was actually very short-lived. And when I was 12 years old, we emigrated permanently to Wisconsin. Yeah, OK, where's my Wisconsin people at? One. One. OK, all right, we got it. That's a far flight. OK. So what did this mean? It meant that I actually spent my middle school and my high school years actually worried about, OK, your normal things, pimples, my accent. I worked on that a lot. And math exams, right? But really, the fear of being found out as undocumented, or even worse, that part of my family would be found out to be undocumented and deported, meant that I spent all of those years feeling like I had this really you know, hot piece of coal in my throat. And it didn't matter how harsh the winters in Wisconsin were. That feeling never went away. So as you can imagine, high school year was, my senior year in high school was actually really emotionally exhausting. But hey, don't worry. You're all here. You know what every top-notch overachiever does. You just bury yourself with work, right? Y'all laugh because you know it's true. Uh, so I started an LGBTQ plus organization in my high school. I was co-president of the Honor Society. I was involved in student council. I played tennis. I did a year-long art portfolio, all for advanced placement credit in studio art. It was one of the many advanced placement courses that I took, hoping that I would get college credit. December came around, as it does every single year, and it was a buzz with conversations about where my friends were going to go to college, where they were applying to, what scholarships they were getting. But I couldn't apply to college because I didn't have a social security number. And we know that's the third question in every college application after your name and your date of birth. So what I did was I spent every free moment that I had, and sometimes even those that I didn't when I should have been in other classes, in the basement of the high school where the art studios were. So I put in every single ounce of feeling that I had into my art, and I avoided every possible conversation about college applications, even though I was graduating at the top of my class. The hopelessness that I felt during that time was so real. Yet my parents said, well, why don't we just go talk to the counselors? Maybe there is some way for you to go to college. So my father called in, made an appointment, and we went to go meet with the high school counselor. They had no idea how to help me. They were not aware of any resources. They didn't have even the slightest clue about what I might do with my life. Well, they had an opinion. They said, you're bilingual. You know what you should do? You should just become a bilingual receptionist. You don't actually need a college degree for that. I felt absolutely broken inside. So it didn't really matter what my dreams were. There was probably no opportunity for me to help achieve them. So what was my dream? My dream was to be a teacher. At first, I thought I wanted to do art. And then eventually, that turned to math. 
That's a whole nother story. But clearly something changed. I get to be here on the Sagna's main stage telling you my story. So what happened? I became very courageous. I did something that was absolutely terrifying. I applied to the community college and used my taxpayer identification number as a social security number. Lucky for me, they have nine digits. So in 2001, I told you how old I am now, uh, the social security numbers I don't think were verified at the local community college. And since I wasn't requesting financial aid, I just got my letter and said that I was accepted. So I went ahead, I enrolled in courses, I paid for tuition and books out of pocket, but I took this as my one and only opportunity to go to college. And so I took every possible class, and in two and a half years, I finished two associate degrees with a perfect 4.0 GPA. Thank you. But that wasn't it. And for me, that wasn't the most important part. I really wanted to give back. And so guess what? I became student government president. I started another LGBTQ plus organization. I was the student representative on the college's board of trustee, and I returned to play tennis. But really, there's one important event, and that was marrying my husband, Jamal. He was a US citizen, well, is a US citizen. And by virtue of that, all of a sudden, there was a change in my immigration status. And so I could then try to transfer to another school to complete a bachelor's degree. Yet there was something really scary that happened along that road. Once we applied and my immigration status changed and I had a social security card, I got to go to the registrar's office and try to explain how my social security number changed. <laughs> that was fun. But her words still ring in my ears. She said, how do we know you are who you say you are? So she thought that maybe I had committed identity theft. She would have to check with the college's lawyers and I left there feeling sick to my stomach. I wasn't sure how this was gonna affect my family because even though I was okay, they were still undocumented. So a week passed of me feeling sick and then I got a letter in the mail and all it said was, here's your old ITIN number, here's your new social, we have merged your records. I'm not sure, even to this moment, whether the visibility that I had on campus actually helped me stay out of trouble, but I really just kind of want to hope that they did the right thing. But after that scary situation, I got to transfer to Marquette University. I completed a bachelor's degree in mathematics and graduated in December. And then in spring 2006, my daughter was born. While my husband was in Iraq as a United States Marine, and of course, because having a baby and a husband at war is not exciting enough, I started graduate school. <laughs> so in 2012, I completed my PhD in mathematics. There's a picture on the screen with my daughter. <laughs> and with a fresh PhD at hand, ink still wet, I started a job at the United States Military Academy training soldiers for the army. It was absolutely one of the best experiences in my life. It felt like it was my opportunity to serve my adoptive country. And, and I, I just love every minute of it. Now I get to be an assistant professor at Williams College, and I have the opportunity to work with extremely talented students from all over the world. And so here I am, my dream came true. I am now a professor, but here's what I noticed. For some of my Latino students, I'm the first Latina professor they might have ever met in a STEM course. Or maybe I'm their first mathematician they've ever met who happens to be Latina. So even though my dream came true to become a teacher, another dream was born from that. And now my dream is to make sure that my students' dreams come true. Now, I still students that I can't help. My dreamer students, are still struggling because the immigration system is still broken. Some of their dreams are still unattainable. And even with the 2012 Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, so Obama's 2012 bill, it aimed to grant legal status to those being brought to the United States as children. 
But here's the thing, they only get a two year period of deferred action from deportation. They're eligible for a work permit, but in fact it does not at all provide a path to citizenship. Some DACA recipients, like my brother, absolutely know no other country than the US, but yet there is no line to stand at the back of to become a US citizen. So what do we need to do? We need to take action. We need to have systemic change. Not only this, but our higher education institutions and professional societies need to create supportive and welcoming environments for undocumented students. We also need to train all the staff on the unique needs of undocumented students. Help, pro yes, seriously, train your staff. Help them provide additional support, but also build understanding about what DACA policies are. Show sensitivity to youth, right? That is something that is key. So we need loud and clear institutional statements that articulated institutions support of undocumented students. In summary, we must do better. We need to help our dreamers achieve their dreams. So before I thank you today, I have a short message for DACA students. I understand that fear is paralyzing. The fear that you experience is real and is scary. Please take care of your mental health. Make it an absolute priority and find people that support you and believe in you. Seek legal advice from reputable organizations. Trust me, people are out there trying to scam us. But really, most importantly, please don't give up. Continue to fight for your dreams. Because as the song said that welcomed me on stage, immigrants, we get the job done. Thank you.